I built, I literally built a USB SM7B, which I don't know that anyone has done. I don't, I don't know that it's been done on YouTube. I don't know if he's gonna make it. We can rebuild it. Stronger. Better, even. Sander. Clippers. Evil's Fox, stream professor here, and I've built a microphone. I've built the dream microphone, at least in theory. I'm calling this the SM7 Beacon, or the EV7B. This is a Frankenstein of the Beacon microphone and the SM7B. And oh boy, I'm actually kind of stoked for it. But but how did we get here? Let's Let's rewind a second. So I got thinking of what I would do differently and I got sent back to two different videos and one of course as I'm going to record this I forgot to pull up the gentleman's name but the first is from DIY Parks where he built his own basically CAD E100S clone uh, which was pretty cool I was also inspired by the YouTube channel from Andrew Masters he's been doing a ton of really awesome studio tours and in those they have you know a whole bunch of home studios professional music to you know studios all of that and quite a few of the studios that he's toured seemingly back to back to back have modified microphones where they talk about how they have this microphone capsule swapped or this one hot rotted or whatever and I kind of wanted to see what that scene was like and the second one here is a video I remember seeing from a gentleman by the name of Lars Andreas S. I don't know if that's in the right order, but that's what his YouTube channel is called. Uh, he basically built his own SM7B from the parts because most studio microphones are designed not only to last a real heckin' long time, but also to be serviceable, to be repairable. A lot of big studios even have like techs on board that will keep a bunch of spare parts in mind and swap them out and repair them and stuff. And so you can buy nearly every component of the Shure SM7B from Shure or from third-party websites or sellers or whatever, including the capsule. And that's where this video really got going. So 180 bucks to get this thing shipped to me a little bit faster than usual. Usually it's about 130, 140 if you sh shop around and have time to wait. Can probably get it cheaper if you buy it in bulk as well, which I will consider if anyone actually wants, you know, co commissions of this kind of thing. Can't imagine it would. Order that up. And my thought was, I'm just gonna shove it in the beacon capsule. And that's where things kind of got hairy. So first and foremost, it required me to take apart the Beacon microphone. I wasn't sure how this would go. I was really afraid that since they built their own DSP and all of this, the electronics inside the you know, microphone, that they would have the microphone kind of more tightly integrated into it. But nope, here it is. The microphone was just attached using two wires. Weirdly enough, green and yellow instead of black and white, as they should have been. But whatever. Two wires for common and ground, basically. Sweet! So pulled that bad boy out and this revealed the actual, the motherboard or the PCB inside the microphone with the DSP on board. The DSP they went with uh, specifically costs about 15 bucks in bulk. Uh, so I, I would estimate maybe like 50 bucks in parts plus the, I'm going to say a hundred dollar mic capsule that they went with based on everything we've seen so far. I don't really know. Uh, so maybe, you know, 150, 200 bucks in parts total for the microphone at most. And that is if you're not buying in bulk, but obviously you're paying for the R&D, the software development, the support, the shipping, the warehousing, the all the shortages and tariffs and everything else going on in 2022 modern era. So don't let that influence how you think about pricing. But the only thing unique about this in terms of how it might apply to this project is they specifically crafted or carved the plastic to dip around the PCB when you shove it into the microphone. This spelled the first trouble for our 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 project here in that the SM7B capsule is a real chunky boy compared to the Beacon capsule and doesn't even, you know, wouldn't fit around the PCB in the first place because it's designed to go on a microphone. It doesn't really have any electronics in it. And secondly, it's actually thicker than the opening on the microphone because this one's a little bit skinnier. And that's why this bad boy is so long. So for my first experimentation, I really just wanted to see if this would work at all. I had no idea if it would power the capsule properly. I had no idea if the Beacon, you know, ADC had enough gain. I had no idea how this would really work. Um, and so I chopped off the capsule, the two wires, and tinned up the leads that were coming off of the PCB, tinned up the leads coming off of the SM7B capsule, and just soldered them together, put some electrical tape over it. Now, the SM7B has two switches. It has a base roll-off switch and a presence boost switch. 
Both of those, I think, make me sound bad. So I wanted to leave both of those disabled. To the best of my ability, analyzing the wiring diagram available for it and Googling what few results I could find, it is my understanding that leaving those disconnected basically acts as keeping them off. I don't know if this is accurate and some of the quality results we get here still has me questioning it, but to the best of my ability, since I, I wanted to do this kind of non-destructively, other than the paint job, of course, I could put this whole thing back together and still have a normal beacon mic and you'd never know the difference. And that was my goal. So I didn't want a bunch of switches hanging out the side or anything. And so that is the strategy I went with. I electrical taped them off, made sure they weren't going to short and just soldered the, it was white to green, black to yellow to get the right wiring going and plugged it in, connected it via the app, and you can see my face when I recorded the first sample. This is a microphone test of... This is a microphone test. This is a microphone test of the... Beacon SM7B. This is a microphone test. This is a microphone test of the... Beacon SM7B. It sounded good. So I got designing, I learned Tinkercad this weekend as part of this weekend project, something I was just kind of waiting for the right excuse to mess with, and this was it. I started designing some parts to go around it, to fit on the screw bit, to screw the windscreen onto, and all of that, and got printing. And the idea was that I was basically just going to extend the shaft a little bit to allow the microphone or the capsule to be housed, and then to just screw the windscreen back on top like it would, because it's basically the same as the SM7B windscreen, and be on my way. And that's basically what happened. A few hours of designing in Tinkercad, getting some, you know, again, I'm learning from scratch, but you know, getting some cylinders designed and printed and hours upon hours upon hours of printing. And it wound up taking about four revisions to get to the first draft that I was excited with, that I was, you know, stoked for. I, I fit it on there. Everything fit perfectly other than I had to have a smaller ring that actually screwed onto the microphone because the that wouldn't actually fit around the capsule itself and then a wider ring that housed the capsule and so I was going to have to super glue these two parts. Everything fit, everything put together. I was stoked. I went ahead and my idea was I was going to splatter paint, spray paint this. Since I have a kind of 90s colorful, you know, glitchy vibe to me, spray, you know, splatter paint is the glitch of painting. So I went with this. By the way, as a microphone test, my AC just kicked on so you get some of the noise rejection of course in the Beacon software. Uh, I, I went ahead and pursued with that. I thought that was going to be pretty cool. I thought that was going to be the way. So I got everything put together. I took everything out of the microphone, taped off the right pieces, and started, you know, spray painting all the parts and getting everything splatter painted. That was a lot of fun. Just, you know, spray some spray paint in a cup, dip a brush in it, flick it on there. Got everything matched nice and neat. I went with a teal undercoat for the microphone itself for all of the different parts, including the little screw bit for the windscreen, and then some pinks and purple hues as the splatter coat on top, and then kind of went for the opposite approach on the mounting hardware. So the yoke and the nuts and all of that. I took all of those parts apart and went with the deep purple undercoat to kind of contrast a bit. And then some of the pinks and the bright teal and some white trying to get that as the splatter coat. I think overall it turned out pretty great. Uh, I, I am super stoked with the paint job. The problem is, is after I put it back together, it sounded pretty bad. This is my first official in OBS test microphone test of the EV7B, the USB microphone we all deserved. Running in with some post-processing that I'm not sure if it sounds good yet. We will find out. Then. You see, when I originally recorded my first sample, I, it was literally hot wired together. I was holding the capsule in my hand, whereas this sample where it sounded really bad was pre-built and I built it wrong. It sounded really tinny and boxy and I was really confused. The SM7B, if you pull off the windscreen, you can see that the capsule itself actually reaches up to almost halfway through the little interference tube here into the windscreen. Like it doesn't just sit back here, it goes about halfway out. In my original designs with the plastic and everything, I did not do this. I had a lot of trouble making a plastic mold that would actually fit around the varying sizes because you got like three or four different points of different sizes of the diameter of the SM7B capsule. I had it so that the plastic was basically wrapped around the capsule. Duh. 
that didn't work. Because it's designed this way, you know, as every microphone that's been around a long time and built on designs of 100-year-old microphones, every little measurement, every placement, every little detail is planned out for a very specific reason. And me hacking away at my first time in Tinkercad was not making decisions in that regard. And so what I believe was happening was since the plastic was shrouded around the capsule, effectively my vo vocal waves had nowhere to go and were just bouncing around in the plastic housing and off of the plastic housing into the back of the microphone, making it sound really thin and really tinny. So after all that paint job, all that work, it was back to ground one or ground stage one, the drawing board when it came to the, the, the designs. So had to take everything apart, ended up having to smash some of the bits to get the super glue undone and to actually take it apart without resoldering everything. And so I decided to redesign it in two parts with a kind of snap lock system. Instead of being multiple cylinders that went on at different stages, just two parts that would be easy to put on and take off while everything was already soldered together. And this ended up taking quite a few extra revisions, which each took four hours or so to print, which was really annoying just to find out I did one little thing wrong, but ended up with a system that I could snap together in place, screw the windscreen on, and mount the capsule. And that part is really cool. Then of course I had to paint everything again, get a new undercoat, new splatter coat. It's not gonna match everything perfectly, but I did my best. And I'm still not entirely happy with it compared to the original build I did. The original build was a lot more uniform looking. It all matched a little bit better. Although by the time I got to painting, I was using draft quality. So the, the overall sphere of the, or the roundedness of the cylinder wasn't super great, but like everything matched a little bit better. Whereas this doesn't, I don't have a lip that there's a little lip with the LED ring that my original design could go over top. That was kind of impossible with this one. I wasn't able to do that. Uh, the snapping system doesn't actually fully snap into place. And so it doesn't look completely seamless, but but it was it got to a point where I was like hey this is almost midnight on a Sunday I had to call it for a weekend project I got it done I got the concept done I did it I built it and it sounds a lot better like this I still don't think it sounds perfect it still has a little bit of boxiness to it compared to the raw recordings of the SM7B let's go ahead and play those just as a clean slate example of the audio quality updated in real time as I'm working on this project, this is the original capsule for the Beacon microphone at about 11 decibels of gain. I am an inch off of the microphone capsule. I can get right up on it as well. This is with no post-processing applied, three rings for the Oven Kings under the sky, seven for the Dwarf Lords in their halls of stone, nine for the mortal men doomed to die, one for the Dark Lord on his dark throne in the land of Mordor, where the shadows lie. Three rings for the Elven Kings under the sky, seven for the Dwarf Lords in their halls of stone, nine for the mortal men doomed to die, one for the Dark Lord on his dark throne in the land of Mordor, where the shadows lie. Three rings for the Elven Kings under the sky, seven for the Dwarf Lords in their halls of stone, nine for the mortal men doomed to die, one for the Dark Lord on his dark throne in the land of Mordor, where the shadows lie. And get the popcorn ready. Now you can hear right away, the, the SM7B itself is a little darker. Now part of that's gonna be the PreSonus preamps, which aren't super great for this mic in particular, but part of it is that despite using the same capsule, I'm still getting a little bit of crunch, a little bit of that weird crunch. It's not anywhere near as much as on their capsule. I think the two together are, you know, emphasizing each other, but there is a little bit of that crunch there that is either down to their electronics or there might still be some weird frequencies bouncing around in the plastic housing. And I think a, a if I did a full V2 of this, I could redesign it better. That would mostly eliminate that as a possibility. But I think part of it comes down to their hardware too. But ultimately, as a weekend project, I'm pretty stoked. I got an SM7B attached to the Beacon hardware, and that is what I wanted. I wanted the capsule that sounded good and was easy to access, at least. I would probably prefer a different capsule, but you know, I got a really good sounding capsule attached to their hardware, so I can still use their full pro post-processing suite for their crazy parametric EQ, their compressor, their noise suppression, which I find actually makes my voice worse. So I've actually turned it off for the sample now that my AC is off. You'll have heard it in different points of the video. However, I am also noticing, and I think I noticed this in my other Beacon Mic samples, I am getting this weird gap in the spectral analyzer here in Audition as I record this. Between 6,000 and 7,000 hertz, I believe, there's just like a missing frequency. <laughs> there's just like a gap in between the audio. So between their ADC, maybe it's not the best choice here that weird missing frequency and whatever, we're still not par for par how the SM7B would sound. It's still not the ultimate microphone, but it's pretty darn close. It sounds pretty good 
by comparison, you know, to the to the beacon mic. And I think it's pretty cool. Now, cost effectiveness wise, I don't think it's necessarily worth it. We're looking at, you know, 270 bucks at least for the beacon mic itself. Plus, I paid 170, but about 140 ish for the mic capsule. That puts you at 410 US dollars uh, versus 300 to 400 dollars for the SM7B itself. But this is a full I built. I literally built a USB SM7B, which I don't know that anyone has done. I don't, I don't know that it's been done on YouTube. So I have built a USB SM7B. So you're getting the complete package. Now, I literally just said, you know, we're running into problems because of it. But like, you don't need to buy an audio interface or a cloud lifter or whatever, you know, combination of additional supporting hardware. You don't even need to buy an XLR cable. The USB cable comes with the beacon. So you don't need to buy anything else. Like it would just be a complete package, which is pretty wild. I, 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 I don't really know what else to say. I've had to re-record this a couple times because I still feel like the post-processing isn't doing what I want it to, weirdly enough. Like, I love their software. I love what they've done for it, but it's still kind of inconsistent. And in my original take of this video, I found my, my, my vocal quality degrading over the course of the video. So by the end of it, it sounded really bad again. Again, I think that was the noise suppression just kind of wreaking havoc. So I've turned that and the expander off for this purpose. But I've got the compressor set to... It reverted back to simple. Oh my god. Okay, I've reset the compressor to where I want it to be. See, this is part of my problem. I'm gonna crank up the makeup gain as well. This is part of the problem is despite the fact that the settings are supposed to save on the mic and they're supposed to be blah blah blah, it resets the compressor all the freaking time. Alright, now I think I have it where I want it to be. And so part of my sound changing is literally the settings keep changing just on me at random. It Long term, I think this project's going to be really viable because their their software as a concept is huge. So far, it's been an unstable disaster for me. So I, I've said that enough. I don't want to rant on it too much. And it's probably why I sound completely different in all the different takes of this video at this point. But conceptually, like I made what could be the world's first USB SM7B. And I'm so freaking excited. So if you liked this project, stay tuned. I have a second beacon microphone coming where I'm going to completely take it apart, combine it with a few other elements and build my own beacon audio interface. So this basically served as a proof of concept for a beacon audio interface. Should they make one? I don't know. This second project will be literally making a beacon audio interface that's modular where it has an XLR port. You can plug in whatever microphone you want. That's going to be really exciting, so get subscribed for that. But yeah, I'm super stoked. Let me know what your thoughts are on it in the description or comment section down below. Like I said, if I if I end up getting commissions for this kind of thing at some point or want to do it more professionally or more permanently, I'm going to completely re redesign the housing um, and fix all of the issues that I ran into along the way. Big picture, if I wanted to do this seriously, I, could, I, I think I would just completely redesign the shell entirely that the microphone sits in that keeps the capsule and the you know PCB together so that it's not an extra windscreens length on top of the SM7B, but then I'd have to, you know, build my own yoke system and all that. And I didn't want to get into that for this project. So I love the colors. I love the paint job. I love the splatter. I love the contrast of the purple and the blues. And I love how it sounds most of the time when the software is consistent about how I sound. It still didn't live up to the full SM7B itself, but as a fun weekend project, this was freaking awesome. I do hope you enjoyed the ride. I hope you enjoyed watching along with me. If you're looking for something else to watch, go watch Andrew Masters' channel with all those awesome audio production studio tours over here. Got some awesome stuff. And if you're looking for more, you know, microphone coverage, I have a whole playlist of microphone reviews and things like that over here as well. Thank you so much. Remember, be kind. Rewind.